GH Dog TV, your number one TV for all dog lovers. My name is Kelvin. I'm uh, Ghana's answer to dog training. Ghana's only professional dog trainer. Keep watching GH Dog TV. See ya. My name is Solo One, you can call me the dog blogger, and this is GH Dog TV, your number one dog TV for all dog lovers. If this is your first time of watching a video on this channel, you kindly subscribe to our channel and then you hit on the notification bell icon for more exclusive and amazing dog content. You can also follow us on all of our social media handles on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at GH Dog Blogger and log on to our official website at www.ghdogblogger.com. This program is proudly sponsored by Eminent Dog Feed and Puppy Book. You want the right dog feed for your dogs with the right nutritional content. Just link up with Eminent dog feed and they also have puppy milk as well for your puppies as well just link up with them on 0244-820-350 0244-820-350 i'm sure you can hear some barking at the background yes today i'm visiting a kennel and i'll be getting up close with the boss man of this kennel as well today we're going to talk a lot about the breed cane corsos so don't go anywhere sit back relax as we bring to you more exclusive dog content from this episode on gh dog tv my name is solo one you can call me the dog blogger okay welcome back to the show just as i told you today i'm at a kennel and i'll be getting interactive with the boss man right here the name of this kennel is raj cane corsos and this kennel can be located at Dansoman in the greater Accra region. I'm about to get up close with the boss man and then we'll get to my favorite part where we check out all of the dogs right here at this kennel. But then just in case you want to link up with GH Dog TV, pick the number on our screen 055-328-4056. 055-328-4056. Now allow me to introduce my guest for today's show. Boss, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'd like you to introduce yourself to my lovely viewers. Uh, my name is Robert, Robert Annan, and uh, people call me Raj. It's, the, it's, it's an initial of my name, Robert Annan Jr. Wow. So it has now come to stay Raj. I okay, okay. actually thought that the Raj was more of like your, your first name or something. No, they are initials of my name, uh, Robert Annan Jr. Nice one. And you have this beautiful kennel right here. Let, um, let, me, uh, let me first ask this question before I come to ask you about how you became a dog lover and all. But then for how long has Raj King Koso been operating? Uh, Raj King Koso has been around for about five years. Uh, we, we have been quiet. We have not been advertising, but we've been doing our own thing, trying to do our best. But it's only recently that we started coming out. And most people don't even know me. Most people don't know me, yeah. One thing I love about this place is it's very spacious, very neat. Um, I, I've really loved this kennel right here. So before we, we even get to talk more about why you got into the king courses and all, let me ask you, how did you become a dog lover? How did your dog, your love for dogs start? Was it somebody who introduced you to it or what? Uh, nobody introduced me into it. It's, 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 it's inborn. It's, 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 it's a passion. I developed that passion very early in age. Uh -huh, when I was very young, but you know, my parents couldn't take care of such dogs themselves and they wouldn't allow it. So I had to admire such dogs from afar, from a distance. When they are passing, I'll be watching. So sometimes I have to stop to interview some of the guys who were uh, walking them, especially the German Shepherds and the Rots. Uh -huh, those, uh, those times, those were the main dogs around. Uh -huh. used to call the German Shepherds the police dogs. The bulldog. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> nice one, nice one, nice one. So um, you seeing um, all of these people, interviewing them, talking. So I'm sure you might have had a dream dog. What was your dream dog back then? Uh, back, back then, it was the Rottweiler. I remember, I remember there was a particular guy who brought a dog from outside, I think from South Africa. Very big Rottweiler. I don't know whether it was pedigree, but very huge Rottweiler. And I wanted to talk to him, get to know him. Up close. It took me about a week just to be able to get to, to him. Because every day I'll go over to normally where he normally walk, walks his dogs until I was able to <laughs> get to him. Very nice dog. Uh, you you growing up as well, which dog was your first dog? Or wh- which dog did you plan to get? Since let's say when you grew up and then you were ready to have dogs in your home. Yeah, my my my, my main what do you call it, attraction was the Rottweiler. My main attraction was the Rottweiler. But a few things happened that made me to change my perception of the Rottweiler. I was duped. Uh, true fraud. Somebody promised me a dog. I paid money for it. For it. Instead of giving me, me the dog, he didn't give it to me. The dog ended up becoming, what do you call it, uh, having pavo, and he wanted to sell it to me, which I re- refused. And he refused to give me back the money I had paid for it. But I thank God that I didn't actually uh, take it, because just around that same time, I traveled outside to Holland, and I saw the Kosos. Very powerful and athletic dogs, majestic and imposing. <laughs> I mean, you can use all the adjectives. They're magnificent, they're elegant, they're imposing and overpowering stay. Wow. Can keep an intruder away without the dog even making a move. You see, so these are traits that make them the ultimate family guard dogs. They're very intimidating. But at the same time, these are very gentle dogs, very calm, and uh, they like to be near you all the time. Sometimes they can be very sensitive, especially to signs of distress and trouble in the house. So they may respond in a way that if you don't understand, you will think they are aggressive, but that's not the case. That's their temperament. So you need to be up close and know them. They are very suspicious dogs. Very. And uh, you need to, they are very dominant, especially their meals. You need to be able to set rules and let the all family members also understand their rules and keep to their rules. Otherwise, you might end up with a dog that is uh, not well-rounded and uh, unruly and aggressive and a danger to itself and to the public. About the king course, I'll really let us delve much into it, but I'd like us to build it up um, bit by bit. So, I think you mentioned that you traveled outside to Holland and then you saw this magnificent um, you can use all the adjectives in the world to describe them. So, was it did you visit a kennel? Did you some, see somebody walking the course? Because you being a Rottweiler lover and seeing a course. I think it would it would it would be something exceptional to actually change your mind from the Rottweiler to the Koso. So what did you see about the Koso? Or where exactly did you see the Koso? Yeah, I I saw them in a friend's house. Then I saw some in a park. Huh. But what attracted me was the uh, physique, their imposing physique, their intimidating stay. You see, the the uh, the uh, the uh, regal nature is awesome. Wow. It's amazing, especially the males, mm-hmm. especially when you see the real, true representatives of the breed. There are a lot of the cossos around that are not true representatives of the breed. It's 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 unfortunate, but that is what is happening. People don't know; they haven't educated themselves about their breed, so they don't know. And people are passing off things that are not supposed to be causes as causes. Huh. But when you see the real ones, you will know that these are causes. Very magnificent creatures. I'm even amazed looking at some of the beautiful dogs right there. There's one meal here I'm, I'm, I'm loving. Lovely viewers, um, trust me, we'll, we'll get to my favorite part where we check out the dogs. You, you see the dog I'm talking about and I'm sure you're also going to fall in love with not just the dog but the breed 
King Corso as well. Mr. Raj is going to make you fall in love with King Corso. As I came here, he has told me, Solo One, after you leave here, you are going to be a number one fan of the King Corso. <laughs> okay, so um, you seen uh, some at your um, your friend's house and all. Which Corso was the first Corso you got and from which kennel and all of that? I would like my lovely viewers to know how the whole process went about. Uh, the first Corso I had was Elsa. Uh, la, la Potenza de la Mordi Elsa. Wow. That's the full name. Yeah, what I call her Elsa. Yes, uh, but it's from the kennel, Sandra's kennel in Holland. Uh, la Potenza de la Mordi. Very beautiful dogs. Is Elsa still around? Yes, she's there. I, I can't wait for my, 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 my lovely viewers to check out Elsa, the first dog that came to. She's the female that I have. You think she's a male, but she's a female. Very huge. Lovely viewers, in case uh, this is your first time of watching a video on this channel, I kindly urge you to subscribe to our channel and then you hit on the notification bell icon to always be updated whenever we drop yet another exclusive dog content. On this channel, we visit kennels, we talk to dog trainers. You can check out some of the content on our channel and then you kindly subscribe for us. And this program is probably sponsored by Eminent Dog Feed and Poppy Milk. You want the right dog feed for your dogs. Poppy milk, poppy milk, dog feed. Trust me. Contact them on 0244-820-350. 0244-820-350. Okay, so Mr. Raj, we continue with the uh, the conversation. So you get in the course, so did you had in mind that you were going to breed them or you were just picking them up as as a dog lover getting a dog? Uh, actually, I had no intention of breeding. Uh, my intention was to get the ultimate guard dog, and then a companion for the ultimate guard dog. Uh -huh. But later on, when people started getting involved, getting to know the breed, they started pushing me, you need, 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 need to get a male, you need, need, need to get, what do you call it, a puppy, so that we can also have some. So the pressure brought my mind to breeding. Otherwise, I think I would have settled for just a guard dog. Okay, nice one. I'll ask you about the challenges about breeding the course we're not later on. But then um, let's learn something about the course. I'd like my lovely viewers to know something about the king course. Let's say the brief history, their temperament, and all of that. Because I'm sure somebody might be watching us and this might be the first time they're even seeing the king course. Or maybe they might have heard of it, but they don't know very much about it. So I'd like to, you to say something to my lovely viewers. Educate them on the breed for us. Okay, the, the, the name Cane Corso, it, it's actually pronounced Cane Corso. The plural is uh, Cane Corsi. And uh, they descend from the Italian war dogs. They were used for wars during those olden times. Yes, and the, the name Cane is, uh, is from a Latin word that means a dog. Then you have the Corsos. The Corso has two meanings. The, we use two words, uh, cohorts and then the Corsos. The cohorts means bodyguard, and then the cohorts means uh, robust and steady. So you're talking about a dog, a bodyguard uh, that is robust and steady. See, and uh, these are dogs that uh, are very gentle, they are very trainable, very easy to handle, but at the same time, they are very dominant. Sometimes a lot of people will tell you that uh, uh, they don't, uh, they are not suitable for first time dog owners. And it's true. It's not that they, they, are, they are not suitable for first time dog owners as such, but because of the, their temperament, they need somebody who can dominate them. Somebody who, especially the males, I always say especially the males. So, somebody who have time for them somebody who can socialize them well, somebody who can train them, and they need, I must add, they need a very large compound, securely fenced, if I might, I might add, mm -hmm. to keep them in, the, in their yard. Otherwise, they might become, uh, what do you call it, a danger to themselves and the public. Who don't know. They are very suspicious dogs, and it's not everybody that they will be, become friendly. Don't expect to come here and then immediately the courses are friendly with, with, with you. But they are great with the family, and they will give you, once you are in the family or other animals in the family, they will give you their undivided loyalty and protection. 
they are calm dogs, they are sociable, they are great with children. My assistant here, I don't work with anybody here apart from, um, I also work, my assistants are my family. My little girls, they help me to do the job, yes. So I was, I was even amazed when I came here and I saw some of your, um, your daughters with the dogs handling them and I'm like, wow. Yes, you see the thing is, they are great dogs, but then uh, interactions between uh, children, especially the little ones, must be supervised. Not that they will harm them, but you know, because of their size and weight and then they like to jump, they might push the child down and in the process they might hit the child. Then apart from that too, other, uh, if, they are, if, if you're having visitors from outside, especially children, you know children make a lot of noise and funny noises and the child, the dog may think that your child is in danger and might want to intervene. Uh -huh. But apart from that, they are cool dogs. They are cool dogs. Uh. They also require early socialization as well. Very early socialization and, and, and training. You see, you need to, at an early age, before four months, you need, need to expose them to different kinds of people, different events, different sounds, different animals, sights and sounds, so that they become well-rounded dogs. Otherwise, like I keep on saying, they might become unruly, suspicious of Already they are suspicious. So once they are not well socialized and trained, then they become, uh, what do you call it, a danger to the public. That's why in some countries they are banned. And it's not because of the dog's fault, but it's because of the people who are handling, who are handling them. They don't know how to handle them. Especially when they are not, uh, what do you call it, uh, first, they, they are first time dog owners. And they are not used to dogs with such uh, aggressive temperaments. Uh -huh. It's like, uh, Somebody wanting to drive and you go and get yourself a Lamborghini or a Ferrari. I mean, it, 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 it is totally out of the way. You, you will get it all wrong. It's like giving somebody a weapon that he doesn't know how to handle. It might become destructive to himself and to the public. So it's advisable that first-time dog owners don't. Unless you, are used, you have a little ex ex experience with some leadership skills, you need, need to train them and make them more sociable and amenable to people interacting with, with them. They are very so sociable dogs, but you need to have time for them. You need to train them. And they are very easy to train. Very lovable dogs and affectionate, if I might add. <laughs> so people think they are just aggressive, 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 but they are not. When you are alone with them, they are the most gentle dogs that you can ever get. Very affectionate. They are near you. They, they want to be near you all the time. They feel that they have to be near you. You see, they demand time and they will take it from you. If they can't get it, then they become very destructive. You use, they have a lot of excess energy. If they can't expend that energy, they will find uh, their own ways of using that energy. And most times it's destructive. Maybe digging holes, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, attacking your furniture, dis 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 destroying something. Uh -huh. But once you have them under control, well exercised, you walk them, you have a yard, big yard, where they can run around to burn all that energy. I think the dog is fine. So, um, Mr. Raj, from w w what you have mentioned, if I'm getting it well, the King Koso is not just a breed for anyone, right? Yeah, it's not a breed for anyone. I always tell people that uh, sometimes... It's not just having the money to buy the finances to be able to purchase the dog that makes a difference. But you need to come and have a look at the dog. Come and ask yourself certain questions, soul searching questions. And if the answer is yes, 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 then you know that that's the right dog for you. But you come over there and you see the dogs, they need a lot of, what do you call it, uh, 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 time and attention. You ask yourself, do you have the time? Let's forget about the financial side. Do you have the time for such dogs? Mm -hmm. Do you have the time to socialize and exercise them? Mm -hmm. You ask yourself that, that question, I will, I will ask them. I mean, I, I don't need an answer. You need the answers yourself. Do you have that, that time? If the answer is yes, fine. Now, are you sure this is the kind of dog you want to take home? Mm -hmm. To your children? In the house? These are very simple questions that you can ask yourself. Once you see them, you know. 
So if you are able to answer, it's yes, yes. Are you going to have time to train them? Yes. Is this the kind of thing you want to take home? If the answer is yes, fine. Do you have the space? A well-secure friends, not just anything. To be able to contain them. Because they are very big, they are, they are, they are very agile, very athletic. And they can jump around. I have some that can even jump this fence with ease. So you need to be asking yourself all these questions. So if your answer is yes, fine. But it's not everybody. Sometimes even from the interview, you see them shaking their heads. It means that they are not ready. They are just not ready. Dog, if you're, if you're a dog lover and you love the King Corso and you're hoping to get one soon or in the future, Mr. Raj just dropped out some of his interview questions. So I'm sure you must know whether you qualify to get a puppy from him or not. I know you know your stance right now because he says it's not good for first time owners. They are a dominant breed and all of that. And Mr. Raj, I also read somewhere before coming here, um, I also did my own research about the courses as well. And um, I think I read somewhere that they are generally healthy dogs. Can you tell us something about that? Are they not prone to maybe some diseases or something? Yeah, there are a few other diseases. If, 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 if you don't handle them, them well, just like other, other, other dogs, they are, they are prone to other illnesses that other dogs uh, suffer, especially their joints, their eyes and so on. But then you need, you need to keep them very healthy, you need to keep them clean. You need a very clean environment, very hygienic envir environment because otherwise they might have issues. And they are very, uh, what do you call it, if I should say, healthy uh, dogs and they have healthy appetites and they eat well. So if you feed them what they are supposed to eat, you hardly have problems. And they are very robust dogs and they don't forsake. The only issues that I may have from time, time to time are issues with their skin, the heat. Uh -huh. But apart from that, I think they are okay. Uh, we, we, we hardly visit the vet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, 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 that's beautiful. Now, be, even before we, 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 we continue with our interview and we get to that, I'd like you to drop your social media. I'm sure somebody is watching. The person is just waiting for you to drop the number, so just in case they can book a puppy or something of that sort. So I'd like you to drop out your contact details, your social media and all of that. Zero two, I'm, 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 I'm on Facebook. And the number is 0244-682235. And I'll soon be on Instagram. On Facebook, it's Raj King Koso. Yeah, it's Raj King Koso. Ghana. Ghana. Raj King Koso. The Raj King Koso for dogs outside the country. That's why I added the, the Ghana to make it more local. So they can see that this is a kennel in Ghana that is producing top quality King Corsos. Powerful bloodlines, I must add. Yeah. Very powerful bloodlines, some with even Russian hairlines in there. Wow, wow, wow. That's beautiful. Now, since you mentioned about um, the bloodlines, powerful, what, what goes into your um, selection of dogs or let's say puppies? What's the whole process that you, you go through? I know everybody has their own um, ways of getting them. What's your own preference as well? Uh, for me, I don't just buy puppies off the shelf. What I look out for are the pedigree parents, the males especially. And uh, what we do is that we, we, we zoom down on maybe about four top males in Holland. And uh, we attend shows. I don't personally go. My brother is there with his wife, who is a serious dog lover. Sometimes she pushes him more than <laughs> I feel sorry for him, but Julius, <laughs> I have to say it. You see, they go to dog shows to verify what we have seen from the internet, the top males. So we are able to narrow it down to maybe about two males. Then we will tell them, the breeders, that this is the kind of, this, uh, this male, I want a puppy from this male. But then, I want a female with this characteristics. If you are able to get me that, I don't tell you exactly the female you should go and cross. But if you are going to cross a female that has some of the features and characteristics that, that I want, you give it to me. I check on it. Fortunately, with the courses, you can go on the uh, International King Corso Pedigree database and check. So you can get their pedigree about 20 generations down. 
Then we have what we call the virtual mating. Mm-hmm. So when I do it, I check the level of inbreeding, which is, for me, the maximum is 4.5. Mm-hmm. If I'm able to get it, most often it's 3 point something. Uh-huh. But if it is more than that, I don't go near. But if it falls within the range that, that I want, which is the 4.5, I take it. Then we give them the go ahead to do the crossing. I pay for it. So I pay for a dog that is not yet born, a deposit for a dog that is not yet born. But I mean, when you look at the pedigree, you'll be able to know what you are going, going to get without anybody telling you anything. If you know, you're going to realize that this is the kind of puppies you are, you are going to get. And I end up being the first, what do you call it, uh, first person to choose. And it's always right. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't go wrong. You hardly go wrong. So most of the puppies that I, that I buy, they are not of the shelf. At the moment, I'm even looking for another male, another powerful male. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, but it's not yet been born. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not headhunting the, <laughs> I'm not headhunting the father of the male that I'll be getting. I have a few that I have, I mean, uh, 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 tracked. But we need to get, there is a show in September which we need to attend and then verify. I mean, seeing is believing, you know. Seeing the, seeing the thing in, in a video or a pic, picture is different from when you are seeing the thing as it is. Then when I'm satisfied with what I see, now I have a lot of experience. So the, the, the male that I choose we far different from the others. I'm patient, I've taken my time, and I'll come out with the right one. Wow, 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 wow. Nice one, lovely viewers. I'm loving the interview right here. I'm at Raj King Kosos. The location is down so man in the greater Accra region of Ghana. And Mr. Raj's contact details are on our screen. Just pick it up, link up with him, and all of that. And as you can see, me, Mr. Raj is in his lovely Kennel Union of Ghana t-shirt. He's a, he's a proud member of the Kennel Union of Ghana. In case if you've not checked out the kennel union of ghana you can go check them out on social media everywhere and become a member yes when you, uh, uh, almost all my foundation dogs are on the in- internet so any information you need all you need is their registration num- num- numbers you can go and check their pedigree yeah. everything. everything is there nothing is hidden nice one lovely viewers just as he mentioned and i was saying you can join the kennel union of ghana big shout outs to the kennel union of ghana they are doing a wonderful job okay so before we we, we wrap up the interview and all of that i'd like to ask you this um final question and then after that you can acknowledge a few people you also like to give a shout out to or something of that sort but then um, let me ask this question um what is your advice to fellow breeders i'd like you to share a word of advice to upcoming breeders fellow breeders and all of that um first of all i'd like to advise people who want to import courses that we have an international king also pedigree database it's free unless you want to do personal donations your, your, yourself but nobody compels you to make any donations if you don't want to uh, if you're buying you have to let the breeders know that you want to have their it makes it easy for people to identify your dogs and to find out and know more about your dogs so it is better for you to ask the breeders since you haven't paid you you compel them to do whatever you want you ask the breeders to register your dogs for you on the pedigree database if everything is okay some sometimes they may look all right right but they don't have all the necessary documentation so you ask them to do and they are very rigorous and they will check before they allow you to register your dogs. So please get them, what do you call it, get them to do the right thing. Then for up and coming coastal breeders, I know there are a lot, they admire them from afar and they want to get involved. What I can advise is, first of all, um, if you want a, a course, don't just buy off the shelf somebody's offering something on the internet or on any platform and you see puppies are nice when they are very young and it's very difficult sometimes very difficult to distinguish between them so you have to get yourself involved educate yourself well I mean fortunately we are we are in an information age where you can easily get all the information that you need 
then visit the breeders. If you want a particular dog from a particular breeder, it is prudent that you visit the kennel. If it is a particular male, child, a puppy that you want, I mean, come up close and have a look at the a meal and see whether this is the kind of uh, dog that I want because most often you have them I mean those pedigrees you have them uh, taking up the character and the traits of the meals so you ask yourself that is this the kind of thing that I, that I want because somebody will show you pictures at the end of the day they present you with a different thing then you also be parading it as the uh, right representative of the breed which is not so it's very important that at any particular stage, if you are interested and you want to get yourself a Koso, you have to do your investigations well, let the buyer be aware. And you need to have a very patient and a very calm personality and a consistent leadership skills. Otherwise, these are dominant dogs, and I keep on saying the males, these are dominant dogs and they will set the boundaries for you if you do not set the boundaries and the rules for them. So at an early stage, these are the things that you have to be looking out for. Or you can start, I mean, uh, if, you, if, if you have no experience at all, you can start handling other dogs, other breeds. Then later on, you can come for the course. Of, but if, if you're a first time dog owner, I would advise. Well, if the choice is yours, but I wouldn't advise. Nice one, nice one, nice one. And now we are, we are, we are about to wrap up the interview about to end of the interview and then we get to my favorite part where we check out the dogs but mr raj before we go i'd like you to say your final words your let's say you want to acknowledge some few people or something of that sort yes uh, i'd like to thank god for how far he has brought us there's been a lot of challenges along the way and uh, we are grateful to him for all that he has done for us i also like to thank my family my wife for the support then my two assistants, my little girls, <laughs> they'll be wonderful. <laughs> so sometimes you have to wake them from bed to help. Then I also like to thank uh, Dr. Peterson and uh, from Pong, 250, for their pieces of advice. I mean, here and there, they've been very helpful. They don't know, but now I'm now telling them. I pick the lot. Anytime we talk, I pick a lot from them. Then I also like to thank uh, Sandra in Holland. Um, from La Potenza de la Mor Kennel. Then the late, uh, what do you call it, Marco from uh, Bel Pensiero Kennel. And then Tatiana. And then uh, Jean Brusen. And then uh, from Il Amico, uh, uh, Il Mio Amico de la Mostra Kennel. And then the Rainy Ben Hartu from the same kennel. And then uh, Jack Plender who gave me beautiful jacks. I also like to acknowledge my brother, Julio, <laughs> and his wife, Angela, and then the, the kids, uh, Chanel and then Gerald, for the wonderful support and help in acquiring the dogs for me. Thanks, I really appreciate it. And uh, finally, I think uh, we'll talk about uh, my family, like I said, my family, uh, then that's all. Nice one. Big shout outs to any person he mentioned in, um, in his acknowledgement. Big shout outs to you wherever you are watching us from. And a big shout outs to the president of the Kennel Union of Ghana as well, Dr. Annie Peterson. Lovely viewers, this is where we are bringing today's interview to an end. But we are not done yet. We are getting to my favorite part where we check out the dogs. My name is Solo One. You can call me the dog blogger. We get to my favorite part. We check out the dogs. Don't go anywhere. right here inside the kennels of Raj King Corsos and this is my favorite part where we get to check out all of the dogs right here. Big Boss, can you tell us something about this lovely boy right here? Uh, with Chitalo, he's, 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 he's got the physique, he's got the, uh, what do you call it, the temperament that you require of a uh, Corso. He's calm but sometimes a little unpredictable. Uh, but he's stable. Chitalo of Raj King Kosu. Yes, Raj King Kosu Chitalo. Born and bred in Ghana. Born and bred in Ghana, yeah. 
Nice one, lovely viewers. Let, let, let's check out this beautiful boy right there, born and bred in Ghana. Okay, Mr. Rajan, what about this boy right here as well? This one is El Mio Amico de la Mostra Libido. C can you mention it again? El Mio Amico de la Mostra Libido. From Holland. Also a beautiful meal, right? Yes. Uh, the, the father is uh, Rotom JY Dream. Let's break the rules. And then the mother is Il Mio Amico de la Mostra Bones. <laughs> nice one. I love, I love this boy right here. A true representative of the breed. Okay. Lovely viewers, let's check out this boy right here. This lovely boy right here. At Raj King Kosos, at Raj King Kosos, Ghana. They have the physique of the Boa Bull and then the temperament of the Rottweiler. So that makes it a very unique dog. Nice one. Magnificent looking dog right there. Okay, boss, and what about this lovely boy here? This is Jax, my favorite. Okay. Uh, he pulls, when we go for walks, he pulls a lot of crowd. Sometimes it slows down traffic. <laughs> Where did you get him from as well? From Holland, from Jack Blender. And how, how old is Jax as well? Jax is four years. Yes, four years. Let me give you a check out Jax. Okay, boss, and what about this lovely female here, too? This is Belle Pensiero C. Ilina. Iliana. Can you, can you mention the name again? Belle Pensiero C. Ilina. Okay, 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 okay. From the Belle Pensiero Canal. Okay, how, how old is she? To Tatiana. Uh -huh. <laughs> and how She's old is she? Yes, five years. Okay, okay. Nice one. And what, what do you love about her? She is very gentle, very easy to be with, especially the children. You can leave her unsupervised, but all the same, you have to, uh, what do you call it, uh, supervise their interactions. But she's more calm compared to the others. She's calm, mm, very calm. 
Lovely viewers, let's check out this beautiful female as well, right here. Lovely female king corso, right here at Raj. Okay, boss, and wh what about these lovely dogs right here? I think, le let's start from this dog right here. Uh, this one is Elsa. La Potenza de la Mordi, Elsa. She's my foundation female. Yeah, the one you mentioned that she was the first dog you got. Yeah, she's my foundation female. She's very big, very unusual for a Koso. But the parents are huge, especially the mother. That's where she got her size. And, and what about this one here as well? This one is also born and bred in Ghana. Okay. It's a female, it's still growing. Okay. It's beauty, Raj King also beauty. Raj King also beauty, also right there. Lovely viewers, I'm sure you're, you're, you're loving the things right here. And then there's also another beautiful one here as well. Yes, we're cropped by Panado. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, and then uh, this one is uh, Bella. Raj King also Bella. Yes, they are also growing. They are, they are still adult puppies. They are still growing. Are they litter mates? Yeah, they are litter mates. Yeah. Nice one, lovely viewers. Check, check, check these beautiful dogs right here in this fine kennel, Raj King Corso Kennel. Raj King Corso Kennel. The location is Dansuman in the greater Accra region of Ghana. Raj King Corso, and I'm sure you're loving the dogs and the scenes right here. So this is where we bring today's episode to an end. Today we visited Raj King Corsos and I'm sure you love today's episode on GH Dog TV and checking out all of the beautiful dogs right here. I'm sure you also learned a whole lot of things as well. If this is your first time of watching a video on this channel, you kindly subscribe to our channel and then you hit on the notification bell icon for more exclusive and amazing dog content. And you can also follow us on all of our social media handles on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at GH Dog Blogger. Just in case you want to link up with us, pick the number on our screen, 055-328-4056. 055-328-4056. And this program was proudly sponsored by Eminent Dog Feed and Puppy Milk. You want puppy milk for your puppies. Dog feed nutritious for your dogs. Eminent dog feed and puppy milk. 0244-820-350. 0244-820-350. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to like this video. Leave a comment and share as well. My name is Solo One. You can call me the dog blogger. Catch you another time. GH Dog TV. Your number one TV for all dog lovers.